This conference will now be recorded. So we are continuing with on page 283 for those who have that booklet, that book, that Sefer, and Safaria, it's gate four, and it's the intro, and it's paragraph seven. Okay? And we are discussing the advantages of a person who has their bitachon, who puts their trust, their faith in Hashem. Umehen, and amongst these benefits, Shabotech Belokim, a person who has trust in Elokim, to the Enu Havtachato Alav, that trust, that faith, that reliance they have on God brings about Shelo Yaavod Zulato. I don't need to to serve, I don't need to bow to anyone else. I'm not putting my hope, my trust in any person. And I'm not going to be waiting, hoping, oh, I hope this person will help me out. And you don't need to try to find favor, to curry favor in their eyes. I don't need to go and start flattering them. And not to agree with them in areas that that what that might go against your serving of Hashem. But I've got to go along with them because otherwise, how will I get A, B, or C? So we, we, we're not putting our trust in others. The Gemara Kedushin tells a great story of a person who came to Rabbah for, for uh, tzedakah. And Rabbah said, well, come join me for the meal. And Rabbah was having some, I think, some beans for dinner. And the person made a face, right? And Rabbah asked, what do you normally have? And he said, oh, fatted chickens and fine wines. Right? So Rabbi said, well, I think maybe you should, uh, you might want to downscale your, your, uh, your expectations. And the person said, is it you who's giving me? Hashem is the one who gives it to me. And if Hashem's meant to, I'm adding it now, if Hashem is meant to give it to me, he'll give it to me from whoever he decides to give it to me. As they're having this conversation, there's a knock on Rabbi's door. Who's there? His sister came to visit. The sister he hadn't seen for 13 years. And what did she bring? Wild guess? Fatted chicken and aged wine. Right? But, but what's very important about this story, I believe so, Rabbi's sister. What's very important about this story is that the person didn't say, no, you've got to give it to me. Meaning a person say, I have my bitachan that Hashem will give it to me. If a person truly has that trust, then if the person that you were hoping doesn't come up with it, okay. So I guess I've got the wrong guy, right? If I'm upset with that person, then I was putting my trust in that person. If I'm all upset that that person is not giving it to me, my trust is not in Hashem. The Chavetz Chaim gives a, gives a parable. He says, you know, um, you walk to a town and you're looking for Chaim. So you go over to someone and say, hi, are you Chaim? And the guy says, uh, no, no, my name's not Chaim. Right? Imagine the guy getting angry. Well, why aren't you Chaim? Well, if, it's, if that's not Chaim, that's not Chaim. Because Chaim says so too. When we're putting our trust in someone else, if we're getting angry at that person, that person is not Chaim. That person is not the person through whom Hashem is going to, if Hashem is going to send it, it's not through that person. So don't get angry at that person, right? So as he's saying over here, when our trust is in Hashem, we don't need to, to kowtow to anybody else, right? And, and, be, and be flattering and be so nervous and be so careful. We should always treat everyone properly. But I'm not going to have to sacrifice my values, my ideals, in order to find favor in the eyes of this person, right? Because I recognize that person is not the one who's giving it to me. Lo yafchidehu in yanam. And a person should not be afraid 
of them, lest they'll take it out on me. If you're supposed to dispute them, if you men, we always want to avoid machlokas, right? Disputes, arguments. But if this is something that you need to clash with that person about, the person is is teaching something erroneously, is treating someone not correctly, whatever it is, you know, you will not be afraid of of right again, never publicly, but calling that person out on it and correcting that person. Aval yit mi big day tovotam. Literally, you will strip off the clothing of having to find favor in their eyes. The Torah hoda'atam and the bother of always admitting, oh yes, oh, what you're saying is so is so oh of course that's 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 an ingenious insight that you're offering. The chovat tagmulam and always having to um yeah to uh to 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 overdo for them. And if you're going to be rebuking them, then you don't have to be afraid that, oh no, right? right. Again, we always have to give honor even when we are rebuking someone. There's a beautiful Pusik. We had this back back in Mishle. Uh, my, uh, that's uh, Kathy and Robin were my Mishle learners for a while, right? So the Pusik there says, don't rebuke a fool lest he will hate you. Rebuke a chacham and he will love you. And the simple meaning is, be careful who you rebuke. You rebuke the one person, it's not going to accomplish anything, it'll hate you. Rebuke a wise person and he will appreciate it. However, the Vilna Gon there, I believe, says differently. He says that when you rebuke a person, if you're rebuking him as a fool, What'd you do? What were you thinking? Where were you? What, you, left your, you left your head home that morning? Right, what were you thinking? If you can rebuke them as a fool, they'll hate you. If you rebuke that very same person as a chacham, as a wise person, and say, wow, I know you're always so sensitive when it comes to other people. I don't know if you realize, but I think that person got insulted when you said, when you did. So if you rebuke them, not... The, 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 the fool as opposed to a chacham. If you rebuke that person as a chacham, right, then he will love you. So you always have to be careful with the person's kavod. But if the kavod, right, this supposed honor that you're giving is going to take away from your ability to rebuke the person because you're afraid that uh, I need this person to help me in this or that. And if I'm going to rebuke them honestly, properly, then, then they might get insulted and then they won't help me. Right? That's what we want to free ourselves from that shibud, from that, that dependency. And if, and if you have to um, um, rebuke them or even embarrass them, never publicly, right? you won't be afraid of that. And you will not. If they're saying something that's sheker, that's false, you don't feel that you need to, uh, to bow to that, to agree to that. Like the Navi, the prophet says, this is Yeshayo. Hashem Elokim ya'azor li. Hashem Elokim will help me. Al-Kain lo nichlamti. Therefore, I was not ashamed. Al-Kain samti panai kechalamish. My face was set like a stone. Ve'eda, and I know, kilo evosh. I will not be embarrassed. Ve'amar Yecheskel, the Navi said, al tira mehem. Do not be afraid of them. Do not, do not be afraid of their matters, of their words. Yecheskel also says, Do not be afraid. Do not tremble from before them. Yirmiyo said, Do not be afraid of those before them, of the evildoers. And Yirmiyo again says, Don't tremble before them. Yecheskel says, Peshamir. Chazak Meitzor, like the Shamir. Shamir um, is is some sort of cutting implement that is stronger than the rock. Natati Mitzchacha, 
That's how I've given your netzach, your forehead, meaning your 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 resolve. Lo tirotam, lo techat mitnehem. Do not be afraid of them. So if we are putting our trust in Hashem, then we're not going to be compromising our ideas, our ideals, our values in front of someone that we're afraid. Otherwise, they're going to not give me the tova. We recognize that anyone who gives us anything is a conduit, is a shaliach from Hashem. And if we're meant to get it, then, and that shaliach decides they don't want to be a shaliach, then Hashem will send another shaliach if we're meant to get it. But don't compromise yourself in order to, uh, if and feel this dependency on another person. A great story that I've told in many different contexts is of this uh, a rav in, in Yerushalayim who had a lottery ticket. Someone came to him for tzedakah, and he didn't have any money to give it tzedakah, but he gave him the lottery ticket. The person comes back next week, whatever it is, and says, Rebbe, we won. I want to split the money with you. And he said, I- I'm sorry, I don't understand. No, no, don't you remember? I came for tzedakah. You didn't have any cash. You gave me the lottery ticket. You gave me a winning lottery ticket. So the least I can do is to, is to split it with you. But what does the ticket have to do with me? No, this is your ticket, right? You would have won. You gave it to me. I won. So I want to at least split the money with you. The rabbi said, I don't understand. It's not a lottery ticket that brings money. Hashem decides who gets the money. Hashem wanted you to have this money. You happen to have had a lottery ticket. Hashem said, oh, that's a good way to send it. So he sent it via the lottery ticket. What does that have to do with me? It's not the lottery ticket that actually brings the money. Hashem sends the money. And Hashem decides which shaliach to send. Umehen. And amongst them, the advantages of trusting in Hashem and not on a person. Shabbateach velokim yivi'ehu bitchono lefanot et libo me'inyanei ha'olam a person who has a trust in Hashem, that bitachon will allow the person to turn their heart, their focus from inyanei ha'olam, the worldly matters, and to be able to focus oneself on avoda, on serving Hashem. If that's the one from where it's coming, so let me uh, let me deal with the boss. Viedome, and he will be similar, similar, nafsho, with the the peace of mind, the the serenity of spirit, the rochav libo, and the wideness of the heart, umiut daagato, and the the minimizing of worries. When it comes to the worldly matters, he'll be like the Baal Ha'alkimia, this crazy wild chemist of sorts. This is a, um, as far as I know, this is an imaginary chemist who's able to hafoch ha'kesef lizahab. He can turn silver to gold. Copper and lead, he could turn it to silver. He has, he has the formula. He knows, he knows what to do and he knows how to do it. So a person who has the Bitochen in Hashem has that same confidence and serenity and lack of worry as this Kimi alchemia guy and more. The old ki avoteach belokim yeshlo alav yeshlo alav yitron. Actually, the person who truly trusts in Hashem is better off than this alchemia guy in asaradvarim in ten ways. Let's hear. Tchilatam number one. 
Shabala kimiyat sarich lidvarim yuchadim lamalacha. He needs to have certain elements to begin with. He needs certain materials. He can't pull it out of thin air, right? You know, in Israel they have these these machines now that pull the water literally out of the air, right? They literally takes the moisture out of the air and turns it into drinking water. They have one of those machines set up by the Kotel. Well, the Alchemia guy can't do that, right? He needs to have certain materials to begin with. Lo yugmar lo davar zulatam. He cannot reach his end, that which he produces, without the initial raw materials. Lo yimtsa'im v'chol eit v'chol makom. And he won't always have them available. He can't always find them at all times, at all places. Babateach belukim. But so in a trust in Hashem, Tarfo Muftach Lo, his sustenance is guaranteed for him or her. Mikol Siba, Misibot Haolam, and it's not uh, right. From, and it's guaranteed from anything that exists in the world. It's not dependent on any certain things. Like the pasuk says, Kamoshim Rakosov. Lamano diacha, in order to let you know, right? This Tomah Hashem saying in Devarim, in Deuteronomy, I took you through the midbar. Why lamano diacha? In order to make it known to you. Kilo alalechem levado yichyeh adam. It's not on bread alone that humankind subsists. Ki al kol motze pi Hashem yichyeh adam. But rather that which comes from the mouth of Hashem, so to speak. It's Hashem's directives that leads to a person staying alive. Right, these different causes, factors, are not held back from God in any time, in any place. Like you know, now he's going to reference a number of stories that we have in, in Tanakh. In uh, about well, we'll starting with Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu Navi came to Ahav, the king of Israel, who had angered Hashem with his idolatry, and he declared, decreed an absolute drought. And then he went out to this Nachal, out to this valley, and there, what would happen? The Orvin. The Pasuk there tells him that the ravens, I've commanded them to, to, to support you. And they were bringing him lechem and basar baboker and lechem and basar ba'erev. And these ravens were bringing to him water and meat day and night. Vima'isha al-mana. Right? So there he was out in the middle of nowhere. Hashem supplied him. The Isha Almana, once that river that he was next to, that once the area was dried up, so then he went to a place, and it says there, Hashem told him, go to Tsarfata in Sidon, Sidon, maybe present-day Lebanon, who knows, right? And there is a woman, a widowed woman, who will be supporting you. He went there, he came to the city, and there was a a widowed woman who was gathering wood, and he said to her, please give me some water from your jug so I can drink. And she said to him, right? And then, and then he said, also, please give me some bread. And she said, by the life of Hashem, all I've got is this little bit of flour and oil that I've got. I'm going to make, I'm going, I'm gathering some wood I'm going to make some food for my son and myself, and then we're going to die of hunger. This is all that we've got. Eliyahu says to her, do not be afraid. Hashem says, in the name of Hashem, I'm telling you, the flour will not stop and the oil will not stop, right, until Hashem brings rain onto the land. She went and did as Eliyahu said. She gave him some to eat, and miraculously, the flour and the oil never stopped. Ugat Ritzafim, Ritzapichet Hamayim, another case with Eliyahu Hanavi, another case with Eliyahu Hanavi, and that was 
when he was in this valley and he said, Hashem, uh, just let me die already. And Hashem said, sent the Malach, said, wake up. He woke up. And there, there was this Ugat with Safim, this cake that was made and a thing of water. And he went and traveled with on that for 40 days. Another story there, again with Ahav, when Izevel, after Eliyahu Navi made the showdown between himself and the prophets of Baal, and the fire came down from Hashem and, 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 and consumed his offering, and then all the Neviya Habal were killed, Izevel, who was the wicked wife of Ahav, right, wanted um, to then wipe out all the Neviim. Ovad Yahu hid the Neviim. He hid 100 Neviim, 50 in one cave, 50 in another cave. And he was able to sustain this 100 people during this terrible, terrible famine. Shanem says, I hid from the, from the province of Hashem 100 men, 50, 50 in a cave. And I supported them with Lechem and Mayim. But Amar, now let me ask you a question. That's all fine and dandy. That's Elio Navi. What does that have to do with us? Doesn't the same Pirkeabos that there that um, B'nai Israel are like the children of prophets? Some. Okay, we have an expression. If we're not in a VM, we are B'nai Nevi'im, the children of prophets. Okay, but I think what he's saying is, it. what we're showing here is Hashem's ability to sustain is not limited in any way or fashion. And I think it's a boost to us that if we will place our trust in Hashem, then he will take care of us in the same way that he took care of Eliyahu and Navi, right? It was not because of his righteousness, it was because of his trust in Hashem. And that's where we can do the same thing. And it says in Tehillim, Kfirim Rashu, V'ra'evu, the, the lions, they roared, they got hungry, V'darshi Hashem, lo Tov. Those who seek Hashem, they're not lacking all any uh, any good. The Amr says, Yiras Hashem Kidoshav, Ki e Machsor Li Av. Right, this off we say this in the last paragraph of Birkat Hamazam. Right? Fear Hashem, the you holy ones, Ein Machsor, there is nothing lacking Li Av to those who fear him. So number one was this uh our chemist friend needs materials. Without those materials, he can't move forward. A boteach b'ashem does not need any of those materials. Hasheni, secondly, kibal hakimiyat sarech l'masim u'lemalachot. Right? He needs to go. He needs. To, he needs a whole process. This engineering production process. Sarech l'masim. He needs acts u'lemalachot and different work that he does. Lo yushlam lo cheftzo zulatam. Without that, he will not reach. His end goal, his production. The Efshar Shiyami Tuhu Reicham, the Ashanam. And for those who work with uh with chemicals, it's dangerous. He can get killed by the Reicham, by the smell, Ashanam, the smoke, Imhat Madata Avodav, Oracha Yigiya, right? It's cumulative over years and years through the constant avoda and the length of his toil. By him, Laila Viyom, day and night, night and day. But but one who has pitachin in Hashem, pivtacha bibitcha meapigaim. Right. So therefore, he is confident from any mishaps. Velibo batuach mimetzoraot. His heart is confident from any harm befalling him. And anything that does come to him, he'll recognize Hashem is sending it to him. It'll be a cause of happiness for that person. Actually, it's interesting. The second to last bracha in the Amidah is the bracha of thanksgiving, of modim. 
And we have, there are two parts to it. There's the first part that's very long, for your wonders and the good, which call eight at all times, the good one, your compassion never stop, your chesed never stop, for all of them, we, we exalt, we raise up your name, our king, right? Right? So the major part is thanking God for all the good. And that needs to be our focus, all the wonderful things that we have in our lives. But we can't ignore that life also throws its curveballs. And life is meant to present its challenges. Right? If you go to the gym and you need to lift a feather, you're not going to accomplish very much in the gym. Right? And life is meant to be this gym that gives us an opportunity to, to bring out latent abilities into reality and to change ourselves. And for that, we need to have challenges. No pain, no gain is in a physical sense, also in a spiritual and emotional and psychological sense. And that's the latter part of the bracha, much smaller. The chol hachayim, when I look at the totality of life, some explain v'chol ha'chaim, all the living, but another explanation, v'chol ha'chaim, the totality of life, yudu chasela, v'yahalalu, and will praise shimcha, your name, ben-met, hakel, the God, yeshu ateinu, ve'ezrateinu. Yeshu ateinu is the one who saves us. Well, it was amazing. I was in this terrible predicament, and look how Hashem, what Hashem did for me. That's yeshu ateinu. And when that does not happen, we recognize Ezra Tainu. We recognize that if it didn't go the way that I hoped, that is for our benefit. Ezra Tainu. Hashem is helping us in that way by not giving it to us on a silver platter. And therefore, again, even when things don't go our way, the Chol Asher Yivo'eno, anything that will come to us May Eitayel who came from God, Yielo lesasson u lesimcha. It'll be as sasson v'simcha, rejoicing and happy. The tarful ba'alav and one sustenance will come. The menucha v'hashkeit v'shalva, with tranquility, with peace, with serenity. Kamosha Kosla the pasuk says, Bin ot deshe. Yar bitseini, right? That's the Mizmor Ledavid that we sing at Sudashli Sheet every week. Hashem Rowi, Hashem is my shepherd, right? The same way that the sheep rely on their shepherd. Hashem Rowi, Lo Echsar, I will not be lacking. Bin Ot Deshe, Yar bitseini. In the fields of grass, Yar bitseini, you bring me there to graze, you, let, you lie me down. Al meimenu chot by by pleasant waters yinahaleini right you guide me the same way that a shepherd takes care of the flock so to Hashem is our shepherd and he takes care of us. Vahashlishi third way kibala kimia eno ma'amin al sodo zulato. Huh. He's not going to trust anyone else with his methods, with his secrets, with his with his formula, with how he does it. Meyirato al nafsho, right? Because he's afraid. If everyone knows it, then who'll need me, right? If everyone has gold, gold is not all that valuable. If everyone has silver, it's not going to be all that silver. Right? In order to be a commodity, there needs to be a certain degree of scarcity. But someone who trusts in Hashem, he's not afraid of any other person because of his bitachon. My brother Josh, Allah Shalom, with blessed memory, was, uh, was an amazing, amazing, amazing guy. And he, 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 he truly lived with emuna peshuta with simple faith in Hashem. He lived in Baltimore. He worked as a caterer. And he 
you know, he, he made a living. He was not, um, he was not a, a wealthy person. And his, his son-in-law related that at a certain point, a, someone moved to Baltimore who wanted to go into catering as if there weren't already enough caterers. So what did my brother do? My brother sits him down and gives him a whole list and says, okay, you want to get your chicken, get it here. You meet, you get it here. You need to rent glasses, do it over here. This is right. He, he laid out for him how to, a roadmap, how to do catering in Baltimore. His son-in-law saw him, saw this and said, Abba, you're not struggling enough with your Parnassa that you need to now bring in some more competition? To which he responded with a smile, oh, thanks for reminding me that Hashem can't possibly give me and this other person enough parnasa. And if I won't do a chesed, if I won't do the kindness for this other person, that, that will be the reason why Hashem is going to send me my parnasa. Thanks for reminding me. Right? And that's what that, that's number three over here. Right? A person is trusting in Hashem, so he doesn't need to uh, to hide how he does his business, how it how it works. But then He's not afraid of any person. He's proud of his of his trust in Hashem. And he's right, and, and and he'll want to share that with others. Hey, you should also put your trust where it belongs. Like David Amelach said, "Alav Shalom Belo Kim Batachti Lo Ira." In Hashem, I've placed my trust. Lo Ira, I will not be afraid. Ma Yase Adam Li. What can any person do to me? Another Josh story, my brother Josh Alavashon. When I first moved to Irvine, I sat down with Delia Ben. And, and we were talking. She was then in charge of the Chesed funds. So I would be working with her in terms of distributing Chesed funds. Right? And she told me that they had, she had children who had moved to Baltimore. And, and, and she started telling me a story that they opened up a restaurant there. And on the opening night of the restaurant, the opening night, the ovens weren't working. And it was bound to be a catastrophe. And she said, but there was a caterer there who heard about this and quickly came over with portable ovens so they could have a good opening night. And I said, you know, that has the fingerprints of my brother, right? Let's find out who that was. And lo and behold, right? There he was, the caterer, helping another restaurant open up, open up shop over there. And that's, and that's number three over here. The Harivii, let's knock out one more. And a fourth aspect. Either he's got to load up his gold and silver in case he needs it. He'll have to have a good supply of this gold and silver that he produced. Or he'll only have on hand those are the two choices. Either he produces a lot and he's sitting on a lot, or he just has as much as he needs. Each one has its advantages and disadvantages. If he's going to have a big stock load of this gold and silver that he managed to produce, He'll always be afraid for his life. Who knows who's going to come bursting in, right? Guns blaring, give me the stuff. They won't get lost from him. 
Ha'aveda, right, from all different ways that it can get lost. Lo yishkot libo, and his mind is never at ease, right? The pas- uh, not the Pasuk, in Mishnah, it says in Pirkei Avot, Ethics of the Fathers, Mar ben nechassim, mar bedaga. The more assets, the more property you have, the more daga. What's daga? Worries. The more worries a person has. And he will not be at peace. He's afraid the king might decide to come and uh, liberate, as many governments like to do, liberate the things that he has. Or va'am, or people will be jealous. People will come steal. Who knows what? Vim lo yasmin mehem el lemalaot machsoros mamuat. But if he just has enough to supply his needs for a short period of time, efsher she yibatzer mimenu hamaseh beidat sorech hagadol elav. Then there's the concern that when I need to produce more, maybe I won't be able to. I'll be lacking this. I'll be lacking that. That some of the, the materials that he needs, right, he won't be able to obtain them. So therefore, he's always worried. I don't have enough. I have too much. What's going to be? Is it vulnerable? Will it be taken? Will I have when I need? Always in a state of worry. But we want to trust in Elokim. Bitchano chazak beilokav. His trust is strong in Hashem. Shiatrif oto kiritzano. God will sustain according to His will. Be'ed shiyirtze at the time that He wants. That God wants. Uvmakom shiyirtze and in the place that He wants. Kasher yatrif ha ubar. Berechem imo. Wow. What a parable to bring. Like the embryo in the mother's womb. Supplies. Supplies are constantly being given. Whatever the the embryo needs, it receives. No worries whatsoever. By Ephroach and the little chick, the tocha beitza inside the egg, all of its needs, its sustenance needs are right there. There is no, there is no um, passageway that anything from the outside could go inside to sustain. And the bird in the in the air gets what it needs. The fish in the water. And the small ant. With all of its fragility and weakness, I know ants are stronger than humans, right? In that they can carry eight times their body weight, and we can't do that. Fair enough, but they're not stronger than we are, right? <laughs> right? right? They're not strong. The Yvat and yet the sustenance can be held back. Mehari from a lion, an ant get what it gets what it needs, but lions can go hungry. In Takvo, right? With all of his strength. But Katsatayamim, he can go days without having what he needs. Kamosha calls the says in Tehillim, as we said before, Kfinum Rashu Vura'ivu, the lions roar, they're hungry. Vidarshe Hashem, Lo Yachsiru Cholto, for those who seek Hashem, they're not lacking anything. But Amr and it says in Mishle, Lo Yariv Hashem Nefesh. Sadiq. Hashem will not cause the soul of a tzaddik to be hungry. Ba'amar nar hayiti gam zakanti velo raisi tzaddik ne'ezav. I was young. I got older. I ne- I did not see a tzaddik who was deserted. Vizaro mevakesh lachem, or his or his children seeking bread. Now you might ask. Well, we have had times when Sadiqim's children were short on bread, right? We certainly have endured such difficult, difficult times. And there are a number of approaches. One approach, which is not how he's learning it, because he's using this, that they're not going to be lacking. 
But Rabbi Sachs has an approach based on the Pasuk in Megillat Esther, the book of Esther, where Esther says, Eich er e, how can I see Be'ivadon uh, Ami, my people getting destroyed? So what does Ra'am over there mean? doesn't mean how can I see, oh, so close your eyes, you won't see it. it means how can I see, stand by idly? How can I not react when I see this tragedy? So that's how he said we can understand this passing in Tehillim. Now Ra'isi, King David says, I was young, I got old. I never saw, below Ra'iti, I never watched idly. I never stood idly when there was a need I did whatever I could do to fill that need. But the Chos Havavos is, is bringing this Pasuk as there's not going to be a lacking. But I think the other shot then is probably how he's, how he's learning it, which is, it's not two things. I never saw a Tzadik Nezav and something else. I never saw Zara Mavakesh Lachem, two independent things. No, I never saw a Tzadik Nezav even when Zaro Mivakesh Lachem. I recognize that even when a person was in a state of need, they were not Ne'ezav. Hashem, you were not deserting them. You were having them endure whatever they needed to endure during that period of time. But when our trust is in Hashem, then we know that if it's good, it's good. And if it's not good, there's a reason. But we're not placing our trust elsewhere. And that goes back to what we said before about the Shemona Esrei. HaKel Yeshu Ateinu, the one who redeems us, saves us, Ve'ezrateinu, and the one who helps us. Meaning, even when we're not getting what we had hoped, we what we had hoped to get, we recognize that that is Ezrateinu, that that is actually in our best interest. I always say the same way that, you know, a parent is not going to give a toddler whatever it wants. The parent will decide what is best for the toddler. Well, the difference in understanding between a toddler and an adult is microscopic compared to the difference of understanding between us and the Rebona Shalom, the creator and runner of this incredible world and universe and therefore we recognize that even when we go through difficulties we're not being ne'ezav we're not being deserved okay we'll pick up here uh where are we at which paragraph just, just, just. number 27 yeah. number 27 27 27 27 good and your and your page it's your one five, five. Five. I'll chat. Yeah. Good. Bye. Okay, everybody. Shavuot. That's okay. That's why it's. Yeah. <laughs>